Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to uh, looking at my YouTube channel. I'm a disabled veteran. I don't get out as much. And so I don't attend church as much as I used to. So I do these videos to talk about God, give my viewpoints on things uh, to interest, spark people's interest to study the word on their own and come up with their own choices in their lives. I got on my patriotic hat, my Second Amendment hat. My, my daughter got me. Um, today's Veterans Day, so that's where I came up with uh, what I was going to talk today about. A lot of people, there are veterans, you know, they, they, they sacrifice so much in their families for them to support the freedoms of our country. And it's there's certain times of the year that really bothers me. Of course, Memorial Weekend, we honor those veterans that have died. And it's real tough for me each year, it gets tougher. Being a combat veteran and losing friends overseas and through the years, same as Veterans Day, brings back a lot of memories. And my beautiful wife has to take the brunt of the way I act. And my son, my young son lives with us. He has to take the brunt. Many times I'm not the best to be around. When you go to combat, you you have things that are there with you the rest of your life. Some people call them demons. I don't believe I don't believe it's demons. But we have to deal with what we've done. And to fight evil, you gotta do evil things sometimes. That's the reason why the title of this video is Israelites Purifying Themselves After Battle. This is something that I thought about when I came back from Iraq. I did a 15 my tour. I knew a, we, a lot had happened, so I wanted to take a year off and come back to the military. I went up taking five years off and came back. I, I wish I hadn't taken that much time. Uh, it was tough because coming back from overseas, I went straight back to work instead of taking time off of work. But once my the company I worked for found out I was back, they was like, "Well, you coming back to work?" So, but that's good. That meant I was a good employee that I was sorely missed. But at the same time, they didn't understand I needed. I wish I had like a month or two just to come to God and prayer and work through what I've I've done and what I witnessed. It's one thing to watch TV and think you'll react some way, but it's different when you're right there. The Israelites, throughout the Old Testament, I'm going to explain a few things. A lot of people use this against Christianity. Uh, excuse me, i got to get a drink. <sighs> Real thirsty. Um, a lot of times through, people watch things on, on TV, like I said, and they'll, they'll get their ideas or what they'll be. I, I've seen big men, tough men, go overseas, go combat and melt. You know, when you have them, I've experienced mortar rounds at me, RPG, uh, small arms fire, Scud missiles. My platoon survived 26 Scud missiles within the first two weeks of war. Um, IEDs, all kinds of explosions all around you. And then comes the point where you have to hurt people. And I've hurt some people. And, uh, that's something I have to live with. Uh, one of the big, a lot of people don't know. There's only a couple people that know. Uh, one of the guys we brought in one time. Um, we brought him into medics. He started having seizures. Well, reason why he ran. And then I know what he was thinking. He had a knife. He pulled a knife on me and I blocked and hit him once with my fist. I've done a lot of training, done a lot of boxing, a lot of martial arts. Uh, on and off with a lot of friends, not counting what I've trained in the military. So I hit him so hard in my fist that we were taking him to the jail. We caught us a gene jail. Uh, he started flopping around back here, and the sergeant I was with, he's like, he's acting weird. I'm like, he sh shouldn't be. We looked back there, and he was uh, foaming ass mouth, full blown seizure on us. And beforehand, I worked a job with people different kinds of disabilities. I worked with the uh, severe physical handicap and 
I, I was operations manager for this company. And so we dealt with seizures and things like that all the time. So I went to full-blown panic, panic. I knew what to do and take care of him. We got him to the medic. And then a lot of people didn't know I was investigated because when you do things like that, military, and think about that, uh, American military is one of the best around. Civilians don't know. We investigate what we do. If there's a shooting, you're investigated. Uh, that doesn't mean, that's one of my cats, that doesn't mean that people do things wrong or get by with things. It happens. But uh, we try to do right for our people and and for the people we are in different countries. And we're one of the, uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, will do as, as much investigation as we do on our own soldiers. So I was under investigation for a while. Like I said, only a handful of people knew that. But like I said, you go through a lot of things and you face a lot of things. And then later you had to deal with it. So. The Israelites, I'm going to give you the example of the purification, what they went through. And then I'm going to explain the reasons for it. And it will, I think it will open things to you. And some of these things you might believe, some things you may not believe, because what I'm about to talk about, because there will be things I'll be talking about giants. There was 36 tribes of giants in the Old Testament that Israelites fought against. And I always thought as a boy, Goliath was the only one, until I studied and learned more. And a lot of people uh, will disagree. Will be people like, where's, where's the proof? We've got proof of giants all over this world. we got all kinds of proof. So if you really study, come to understand and know. But people really don't want to see that. Plus, we live in a secular world. We live in the world ruled by Satan. You know, God is there, but we allow the authority of Satan to come in because of our sin. So there's a lot of things where we're not being taught like in schools. They try to teach you the old earth theory. That's a video I talked about earlier about the earth being young and explained why through science. I love science. I love archaeology. If you really study, uh, a lot of people, and that's one of the things I studied, talked about was how the early scientists, one of the best ones of Sir Isaac Newton, uh, believed in God. So there's a lot of scientists that believed in God. The purification rites that the Israelites went through after a battle talks about Numbers, 31st chapter, verses 19 through 24. And do ye abide without the camp seven days? Whosoever hath killed any person, whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment and all that is made of skins and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood your clothing, uh, what you used outside for your uh, armor, things like that. And Eleazar, the priest said unto the men of war which went to battle, this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead. Everything that made it by the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. You know, so that they had a bounty. And they use this bounty for many things. So they had a, like I said, sent it through the fire so that it would be purified. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. And all that abideth not the fire, you shall make go through the water. So you burn it or send it through water. Now, this is very important. Because what happened in Noah's flood, the great deluge, deluge, as they call it, the purification of the earth by water. Later in our, our lives, earth will be purified by fire. Uh, after tribulation, God will redo everything, and he'll do it by fire. And they knew that in Adam's time. That's why uh, they talked about Adam just didn't know if it was going to be water first and fire or vice versa. But Adam knew that there was a purification that God was going to do to the earth twice. Everything, that, and I said water, and if not by water, by uh, water separation. And all that abideth not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and afterward ye shall come into the camp. So they're talking about being away seven days. They're going through this purification, but they're working with the priest, the high priest. This is a Jewish priest, not a Catholic priest. Um, Catholic Church wasn't even made at this time. That got... 
started in 1313 AD and was official. Thir- I'm at 1330. I apologize. 313 AD and was made official at 325 AD. And many people know I talk a lot about. Uh, I love people that are Catholic. My best best friends Catholic and a lot of people. I, I grew up around a lot of Catholics, but I'm against Catholic Church because it's the uh, uh, for better words, adulteration of the Christian Church. It was Christians that were uh, brought into paganism. That doesn't mean a Catholic cannot be saved, but they're very misled. Now, the reason for the purification, now this is where we come into, uh, I've had some someone real dear to me uh, talk against God and the Bible, and said, well, there's genocide in the Bible. There was, There's reason for things, and I'm going to explain the reason for uh, when these people did what they did and why it was so severe. It wasn't a political, it wasn't pushing your, it's not Islam pushing their religious beliefs, and if you're an infidel, you're killed. It's nothing like that. The reason for the purification. Joshua 6, 15 through 21. And this is talking about the wall of Jericho, the falling of Jericho, the battle. And this is very important. It sets a standard for everything, and I'll explain. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and could pass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they could pass the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout! For the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. And all who gray have the harlot shall we shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Spies went into the city before it was attacked the uh, day before, and Rahab, God uses people. People are the flesh. A lot of times we kind of get that ad too, that so-and-so's in the church, he's, and then they do something wrong. They're like, how can that holy person? We're all sinners, people. I mean, the only one that was without sin was Jesus Christ. We're all sinners. We sin. I lose my temper. I sin. I try to be good. I have good days. I have bad days. And he used a harlot, a prostitute, who was of a good heart, who risked her life to hide these spies when they were being looked for in the city and helped them later sneak out, actually used a basket, went over these huge walls and lowered them down and they got away. Because of that, God blessed her. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the cursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse. When ye take of the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. All the altery ways of, uh, of the camp is what this is talking about. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into that treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the peace, priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So the people went up unto the city, every man straight before him, they took the city. Now this is very important, and I'll explain this. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. That's the reason for the purification after all these battles. When they went into these cities, these were wicked cities, and I'll explain more in just a minute what the cities actually did. It was all in the promised land that they were going into, and they killed everybody. Men and women, and think about it. I have wonderful family. We fight and we argue. We love each other. I got beautiful grandkids. Can you imagine going in there and killing everyone and killing the children? I knew a, a veteran, been to uh, uh, Iraq. He was a ranger. He had a lot of problems. He had to get out of the military. He uh, killed a boy. I honestly don't remember how old he was. He had a vest strapped onto him. He was sent towards the uh, checkpoint. Him and an adult, they both were strapped. And they both were killed. And he's the one that shot the boy. And it bothered him because he had a boy at home. And he's got to live with that the rest of his life. That's the reason why there's a lot you deal with coming out of combat. You deal with a lot of things. I've dealt with a lot of things through my life. I've handled it good. And about three years ago, three and a half years ago, uh, I had cancer and it seemed like after the cancer, it just brought a sickness upon me, and 
I survived the cancer. It was a blessing from God. But it just opened up a lot of things. Now I go to counseling for PTSD. A lot of years I've kind of held it in, and I've realized now that I needed counseling. I have friends that are in counseling, friends that need to be in counseling. I've known a lot of friends that have committed suicide. Uh, one of them being a good friend of mine, he is a murder-suicide. Uh, he killed his wife and then killed himself. We believe that he anger, he hit her once, but he's a big, strong man. That's all it takes. Remember I said I hit that man and, and uh, just defending myself, just a, a move, and it gave him a seizure. So he hit his wife and then uh, couldn't live with it, killed himself. Uh, I got that from a person on the sheriff's department I know was uh, served with him, and that's what he thought too. Horrifying. It's hard to deal with what we've done. You know, unless you're a psychopath and sociopath, you're evil. <laughs> you have no conscience, then you know, the war don't bother you. Many people are bothered by war. It's always been through that way. So they had to kill everybody. And when they went in these cities throughout the promised land, it was total, utter destruction. And it was hand to hand. One night shooting a bomb on them. How we know this is uh, Leviticus 18th chapter, uh, verses 21 through 25. Verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. This one hits home very much. When they're talking about passing the fire through Molech, Molech was uh, a deity, a god, that they would... Uh, Looked like a bull, man with a bull head. Uh, and basically, what they were doing is giving their children, aborting them. These are not just babies. Sometimes they'd be a few days old and they would kill them for the sacrifice for this uh, fake deity. And that's what abortion is today. And all these things I talk about here about the abomination of God and, and judgment comes upon that nation, all is happening in the United States right now. I'm so strong against abortion, it's sickening. I've had people talk to me and be like, well, the rights of the will. No, it's the rights of the unborn, the rights of the innocent. And the one thing that angers me more than anything, because I've had people throw up, well, health reasons, really, there's not. Uh, there's nothing there for health reasons, which I talk a video, I actually have a video about abortion. There's no health reasons out there uh, for abortion. It's a lie. Now, some things can happen to a mother, cause both to die. But in my video, if you watch it about abortion, I explained a lot of things in very good detail and about uh, doctors have spent over 20 years being doctors, uh, like the general surgeon uh, uh, of the United States. One of them was a general surgeon uh, of the United States, top medical doctor in our nation, saying that abortion is not necessary. And the thing that angers me more than anything is people throw out well, what if she was raped? How did, for one thing, the odds are very extreme that you're going to get pregnant from rape. And I, I know someone personally that uh, was raped, unfortunately, got pregnant from that rape and didn't even think about having an abortion. So you can't always, people like, uh, uh, unsaved people like to uh, throw things out there and argue uh, to get their point or get their way. Verse 22 talks about, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, as it is an abomination, and that's homosexuality. And that's something, I, a video I, I talked about, the homosexual lifestyle, and witnessing to people to change. And you can change from a homosexual lifestyle. I know people who have. It's not meant to be. It's all over the United States. And... Uh, it's not meant to be. You know, and you are not, the biggest lie is I'm born that way. You are not born that way at all. And the other thing you talked about was verse 23. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therein. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Beastality. That's about the low. And actuality, you would say, well, that's worse than homosexuality. No, they're equal. They're both bad. Same with having an abortion. They're all very uh, bad sins that go against, totally against God. 
what happens is when you sin enough, God will give you over to your reprobate, reprobate mind. I say that correctly. So that means you'll you'll give into such sin that you become like an animal, very sinful. And verses 24 and 25, Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomit out her inhabitants. Uh, I got a reminder here, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, there's five cities right there, but they were mainly, they talked about the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexuality, bestiality, and being complacent to all kinds of sexual perversion. That's rampant here in the United States. I mean, it's allowed and it's considered nothing. You know, you have these gay parades and different things like that. And look what they do. They, they, they take things of God, make it a mockery. The rainbow is not for pride. It's not for gay pride. The rainbow was a symbol for God that he would not destroy the earth again by flood. The big deluge. That's what the rainbow was. Not this gay homosexual pride stuff. That's ungodly people taking the symbol of God. Something pure and making it impure. Second thing is the unicorn. They use a symbol of a unicorn uh, being a horse and whatever. Unicorn, uh, I, I explained in Mythical Beasts, another video. There was a unicorn. And a lot of people mock God. Oh, yeah, the Bible says nine times there was a unicorn. Because there was. There was a unicorn nine times. Talked about in the Bible. And the unicorn is, uh, as I explained in the video, is a giant rhinoceros. Unicornus, if you look for your early dictionaries, Webster dictionaries, they actually talk about it and describe it. And it's very large. It's like, it uh, reminds me of your mammoth uh, elephant. It was big, bigger than a regular elephant. It was hairy. Well, that's the unicornus was. It was big and hairy, but it had one big un, one big horn instead, too. There's two types of uh more than one type of rhinoceros, and there's one breed that's a single horn, and it's called unicorns. That's where we get the word unicorn from. And they tried to follow, make it a horse with a uh, horn, single horn horse and saying it's got magical power. So again, they take something godly and make it ungodly because it was talked about and used in the Old Testament how strong it was. So you had, through, and these are examples of all these different places that were destroyed and like I said God said utterly destroy him it wasn't Dan was genocide taking them on but it wasn't because of taking the land or on purpose just to gain more land it was not for religious beliefs and the sense of hey my religion is better than yours that's for the abomination doing you know things against God right there you got abortion homosexuality bestiality and now we're going to get into the evil practices a lot of times this has to do with witchcraft it's very evil. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. So the following nations were doing this. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire, or pass through the fire. We refer to uh, abortion. In other words, there's no abortion. Or that useth divination. Or an observer of times, uh, fortune telling is what they mean by that. Or an enchanter or a witch. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, medium. Or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that these things do are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from the, before thee. And what he means by drive them out is just totally wiping them out. And they were doing what God told them to do. So I've got to, so here you have abortion, homosexuality, bestiality, and the evil practice as in witchcraft, things to do with witchcraft, uh, making of charms, uh, fortune telling, uh, talking to familiar spirits, mediums, wizard, even a necromancer uh, that's dealing with the dead, possession, and God's like, this is the bad of the bad. And last, we look for Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. Hear, O Israel, thou art pass over Jordan this day to go and to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven. Huge cities, big, 
big uh, walls. And it says, A people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard say, Who can stand before the children of Anak? He was the leader. These were giants. These were not just people that are maybe around seven feet tall. These are still very large giants. They were genetically uh, DNA. Before there was the sin of, of the angels, uh, being in the book of Enoch explains there's three books. And it, throughout the Bible, it said you could use it as a reference. Book of Enoch, the book of Jasser, and the uh, book Josephus works. Josephus was a Jewish historian. The, the Romans didn't like him because he worked, I mean, the Jewish people didn't like him because he worked for the Romans, but he, he, he uh, dictated history. And that's mainly, mainly the uh, uh, New Testament, but he had some Old Testament in there. The book of Jasher, it's hard to make it authenticate because there's a lot of versions out there. We're not sure which one it is, but it can be used as a reference if you had to have our, our version. Now, the book of Enoch was before Genesis, and how we know that uh, that book can be authenticated because of Dead Sea Scrolls in the 50s, 40s and 50s. Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and parts of the book of Enoch was found. You know, those oral before, and they did written later. You're able to... Uh, uh, get a pretty accurate copy today of the book of Enoch. And it talks about the giants. The 200 watchers that came down, uh, I think it was Mount Haram. And uh, H-E-R, Mount Hermon, something like that, I apologize. H-E-R-M-A-N. That, uh, and I might be off on spelling. Came down and made this pact and decided to uh, mate with the uh, women and to uh, do all kinds of things. They taught all kinds of things to man. Basically made themselves as deities. So they made themselves up like gods. A lot of rumors come out of this. A lot of things through this. A lot of times you'll hear things like uh, ancient aliens and UFO guys coming in there and other planets that really made man or done it. That's the, that's the, the, uh, the uh, lie that's being told. And I think a lot of people will think that's a lie that will be told during the rapture. Saying, oh, we took this people up or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, uh, Jesus Christ calls his body of Christ up. And you go through seven years of tribulation. There will be some people saved during that time. But the Holy Ghost will not be on this earth to give us guidance. So when I make these videos, hopefully somebody will have access to them. And know that God's always there for you. It goes on that more saying, Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as consuming fire. He shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So thou shalt drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Speak not in thy heart after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the witness of these nations the Lord hath drive them out before thee. So it wasn't for the righteousness uh, God gave them possession. It was for the uh, betrayal they done of the witnesses. Uh, witness, weaknesses. I apologize. Sometimes they have trouble speaking. The wickedness of these people was so evil. I the reason my God had come in and had them. I mean, it's right there explained. God had these nations taken out totally, and it wasn't to pass on his our religious beliefs, it was strictly because of the evil they were doing. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thy heart dost thou go to the promised land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He promised them that they will, Jacob would be abundant, the Jewish people, the father of Jewish people, and people would spread throughout. And that's a promise he kept. But as it says both here, it is not done uh, for their religious beliefs. Uh, like something like Islam, they're trying to dominate the world. And they are trying to spread their beliefs all over the world no matter what. And everybody's an infidel and they'll kill the infidels. And I have people I know are Muslim. I love them very greatly. But the truth is the truth. I don't hate them. I pray that they'll realize uh, a part of something that's very evil and Islam is very evil I've read the Quran I have the Quran here in the house I've read it and 
many times over. I've read it through the years. And to have understanding of other things. I've read books about Hinduism. I've read a lot of different things. Book of Mormon, which is nothing. It has nothing to do with God. Uh, there's different things. Uh, beliefs. Jehovah Witness. Uh, absolutely nothing to do with God. A lot of people twisting the words around. Satan's good at that. But um, the reason for going over these is, is the genetic DNA, the mixing of God's, the perversion, uh, abortion, homosexuality, bestiality. I've talked about that. Evil practices as in witchcraft and forms of that. And so these people in this area, the promised land, so vile and so corrupt that God said, I'll have my people come in there and cleanse, do a cleansing. That's what he did. And because of that hand-to-hand -hand destroying and killing everything, it, it affects you. Um, it's the reason why the Israelites purified themselves after each battle for seven days before they went back to their camp. Uh, there's a, the, that grace period. They, they pray to God and do their best to deal with their, to be honest, PTSD, as we hear so much about. Back in World War II, it was called shell shock, different things. Uh, these ancient warriors had it just like people modern, in modern day have it. You know, when you deal with evil, you touch that evil, it's part of you. Once you get violent and cross that line, that scares me. That I don't get violent on somebody and just snap across that line and get physical. The damage I've done, the damage I know I can do, be capable of, is scary. People just look at me and say, oh, it's a fat old guy. That old guy can't do nothing. Well, this ain't Hollywood. You know, it don't matter how many weights you lift. I remember doing a competition with a couple of my buddies uh, years ago in the military when uh, I had one was a real good boxing there, one was a real good weightlifter. I said, well, guys, you always argue, so let's put you to a test. Let me judge. You know, I'll be honest. Let's go to the gym. It's all three. You lift weights one day. Then next time we'll go to the gym and do bag workouts and drills and see, and I'll, I'll judge. That's for, like, who hits the hardest on the punching bag. And we'll put her to a test, and we did that. And... Uh, it was well, pretty well as you expected. The guy that did the bodybuilding did better at weightlifting. But then when we went to punch in the bag, the boxer just, he had the power. And the weightlifter started lit, uh, started boxing because he couldn't, he didn't realize, you know. But the, the boxer did pretty good because of his, of his personal calisthenic drills. He actually did good on bench press, few other things, but he couldn't match the bodybuilder overall because he, he didn't train in that. So, uh it's just a test that we did. We were young men in our 20s. It stays with you. There are things that stay with me till I face God. And it doesn't leave you. It doesn't go away. And when people say a veteran pays the price, they pay the price for you and your freedom. Don't mock them. That old guy walking over there, bent over, is in a lot of pain. I know I'm in pain 24-7. And... I've done things and tore my body up and had chemicals in my body. And sometimes, I, you know, just because I love God doesn't mean I can't get depressed. I've dealt with depression. I've been on medication for my depression. I've dealt with a lot of things. And in our lives, we're not meant to be on our own, go solo. It's which, where you look for help. And the reason why things happen in our lives is because God wants you to go to Him for help. Unfortunately, a lot of times we pick the wrong Stay going to God, we go elsewhere, which is not going to help us. But all these, these people, these Israelites, they fought, like I said, hand in hand combat. They had to kill everyone, everything. It was impure. Pretty sick when you look at, think of some things they did. And what's really sick and heartening, is, it hurts the heart, is to nowadays we're like that here in this country and people don't care. Their same attitude, they're complacent. That's the reason I always put that in there. People always talk about Solomon and Gomorrah and the, the sexual perversions. But I always tell them the worst sin of all is being complacent, accepting those, or not speaking up against those perversions. And look at, that's where the Dead Sea is. That's where all that area, there's there's five cities there off of mine. I always talk about Solomon and Gomorrah, but there's three others. I have another video I talk about them uh, off my mind. When I'm long night, I can't. Remember, all three have memory issues. Um, there are three, but the five cities were totally destroyed. 
and you got the uh, Dead Sea there because of that, and the whole area. And then you have uh, right there near the Dead Sea, Qumran, where they had the uh, uh, jars where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's the reason why they're called Dead Sea Scrolls. They're, they're by the caves by uh, the Dead Sea. And all the all the information there we need that proves the Bible and a lot of things. Of course, not New Testament, it's Old Testament. And the book of Enoch and then the Copper Scroll and a few other things. It's a good study to get into. They're still looking. Some of that stuff was pieced good, something wasn't, so they, they're going through it, putting it together, and they've been working on it for 20 years. But as I said, these things you purify yourself to deal with, attempt to deal with what you had to face. And you do things that you're not meant to do. I hope this gives you something to look forward uh, to studying these videos. I don't want to be wasting my breath. I've already had one person tell me that he's studying. He never read the Bible before. Now he's reading. And I pray to God that you, I'm able to make some more and be interesting for you. Thank you.